Respected Chairperson and learned audience, I welcome you all in this radial session. It's my great pleasure to present in front of my mentor in radial intervention, Ms. Professor Mir Jamaluddin, sir. Thank you, sir, for your grand effort to make us a radialist in the, in the journey in, in ICBD. So my talk is preventing the complication of transradial intervention, what to do? Since uh, 2015, the guideline is changing. From uh, uh, 2015 in non-STEMI guideline, the radial is preferred class one, but in experience hand. And look at that. In 2018, there is no experience. Radial access as standard approach for coronary angiography and PCI. So this is the preferred approach. And the uh, SEC AHA guideline also stayed, uh, changed since 2017. So why transradial approach is uh, preferred because enhanced safety, reduce morbidity and mortality, and overall reduce procedural cost. I have a paper in uh, 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 Bangladesh Cardiovascular Journal. We have published 100 cases of day case coronary angiography. The patient admitted in the morning, they discharge in the evening after the coronary angiography with a band uh, with a bandage in the uh, hand. So this is feasible. We can. Uh, discharge the patient uh, uh, fr uh, fr uh, same day. So, adequate experience with transradial procedure reduced vascular complication and improved procedural success. Uh, uh, and the pre-procedural plan is very important. So, the complications of transradial approach may be in the puncture site, or maybe due to misadventures between the excess site and the heart. So we have some uh, few features uh, of misadventures uh, by Professor uh, Dr. Noor Alom already presented few. So these are the complications, radial artery spasm, bleeding, hematoma, compartmental syndrome, perforation, laceration, uh, uh, evulsion of artery, radial artery occlusion, pseudoaneurysm, subcutaneous granulomatous reaction, cutaneous infection, digital ischemia, and delayed sympathetic dystrophy syndrome. The appropriate selection of patient is very important. The complications of radial arteries are, if you look at the uh, neuralum cases, two of the, um, probably all the f cases are female. So female is low body weight, female gender has increased complication of radial. Dose of anticoagulation it is very important. Diameter of the radial artery, sheath size. If the sheath size is mismatched with the arterial size, this is the cause of radial complication. Number of catheter exchange, procedural duration, and type and duration of excess compression after the procedure. That is uh, evaluated by Pancholi and uh, Patel in 2012. So the compression of the radial artery after the procedure, the time of compression is very important. The radial artery spasm, this uh, frequency varies from 0.8 to up to 14%. And this is the spasm. And the predictors are female, small radial artery, diabetes, unsuc and, and the first attempt is the best attempt. Unsuccessful excess at first attempt is one of the predictor of radial artery spasm. So it may be focal, it may be diffuse, may occur during puncture, during catheter manipulation, or due to repeated catheter exchange. So all can produce radial artery spasm. When to suspect absence of previous palpable pulse, and pain in the catheter manipulation, and difficulty in catheter and wire advancement. So the key to prevent radial artery spasms are, first prick is the best prick to cannulate. Vasodilator cocktails, 200 microgram nitroglycerin and verapamil 2.5 through the arterial sheath. Gentle, gentle corkscrew motion of the catheter. Catheter and wire exchange should be minimal and downsize catheter if possible. Five grand French guide catheter has less spasm and other complications, and sedate the patient, especially if that patient is a female. They are so much anxious that sedation helps them. So how to overcome? We already uh, see that the how to overcome, but take time, sedate the patient. Subcutaneous GTN may help during puncture. Determination of spasm by taking radial angiography by diluted dye, additional dose of cocktail, then take an another cine. If persist, the spasm persists, we can took the 0.25 wire or a PTC wire to negotiate it. And during catheter manipulation, scissor the patient and downsize the catheter. So this is a case of 
radial artery spasm. We uh, took a PTCA wire and we negotiated it and then the uh, catheter is negotiated. And this is after the procedure, the radial artery spasm. There is some spasm, but th there is no dissection and uh, other things. This is another case. This is an accessory radial artery uh, arising from, from the arm. So higher up accessory radial artery origin, and this is a severe spasm. We crossed through the balloon-assisted tracking at, uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Noor Alam already, and this is after the procedure. So the summary in, of radial artery spasm, the incidence of moderate to severe radial artery spasm is low in radial centers with experience with radial operators. The most common me method for radial artery spasm prevention is intraarterial vasodilator cocktail. The use of mild sedation is associated with reduced risk of radial artery spasm. The use of single vasodilator may be used. The radial artery occlusion, this is a very important and the incidence is 2 to 18 percent in different uh, literature. And it may end up with maybe asymptomatic but can cause a serious complication like hand ischemia. So the radial artery occlusion can be documented by ultrasound Doppler post-procedural. Presence of radial artery pulse does not rule out the radial artery occlusion because collateral flow may produce the radial artery pulse. And Loosening the bandage or occlusion device after the two hours of the decrease the incidence of radial artery occlusion. This is very important. And this is the triphasic or biphasic flow, and this is the absent flow or monophasic flow from the collaterals. And prevention of radial artery occlusion, what to do? Thrombosis is one of the mechanism of radial artery occlusion. So prophylactic anticoagulation is recommended to prevent the radial artery occlusion. We routinely use 5,000 unit of uh, heparin root, uh, in for CAG and for, uh, for PCI 70 to 100 unit per kg later on. Use vascular sheath and catheter with smallest possible diameter is recommended. The ratio of sheath diameter and radial artery, if it is more than one, there is an increased chance of radial artery occlusion. So the prevention of radial artery occlusion, immediate removal of sheath after procedure, this is uh, advised by Saito, Non-occlusive or patent hemostasis can lower the radial artery occlusion, as mentioned by Pancholi et al. and Petel et al. Concomitant compression of ulnar artery may reduce the radial artery occlusion. Shortening the bandage compression after removal of sheath, usually two hours, is mandatory and it is very helpful. But a study done in Moti Nethel under the guidance of Professor Mir Jamaluddin, and I am also a co-author of this uh, study, Using the conventional compression technique, the incidence of radial artery is not very high, only 3% that found that, and we found that the loosening of the bandage after two hours reduced the rate of radial artery occlusion. This is published in a Bangladesh Heart Journal. So this is the conventional radial band with uh, uh, hemostasis technique. This is radial band, but I think 99% of our uh, uh, country, we use not use the radial band, we traditional method of compression of bandage. This is very effective, but men, uh, I again mentioned that after two hours of the procedure, we should loosen the bandage a bit so that the patency will be maintained. So the key to prevent the radial artery occlusion is proper anticoagulation, appropriate selection of equipment, uh, and uh, immediate removal of sheath, and patent hemostasis, and conventional hemostasis with loosening of bandage after two hours. Radial artery perforation, excessive resistance in the passage of guide wire and catheter felt in the operator, complaints of significant local pain of radial artery or brachial region of, by the patient, and development of an extensive hematoma may be present. So these are the indicator of radial artery perforation. Predisposing factors are small radial artery, elderly patient with tortuous radial artery, hypertensive patient, L R uh, radial artery loops in infinite forceful manipulation of guide wire and catheter. So we should be very gentle and course through like movement of the catheter is very important and reuse catheter or diagnostic wire is one of the causes of radial artery perforation. So how to confirm? Immediate removing the assembly and injection of a dye, diluted dye. And the protocols are apply the pressure cuff 
at the site of in, uh, in duration, inflate the cuff for 15 minutes, 10 to 15 millimeter uh, 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 below the systolic blood pressure, monitor the arterial flow and oximetry, adjust the cuff pressure to obtain the signal, manage pain and hypertension, consider stopping anticoagulation, consider problems if no, uh, 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 consider protamine if no planning of PCI, and if persistent swelling pain in duration after two in inflation of 50 mini 15 minutes, consider urgent surgical concern. This is the uh, compression over the uh, hematoma and perforation, and look at the plethysmographic curve of the finger. So this should be present. The plethysmographic curve, if it is disappeared, uh, that we are giving the excessive pressure. So this is not uh, ideal. And it is ideal to 10 millimeter below the systolic blood pressure, the cuff pressure should be. The radial artery perforation and continuation of the procedure, we can uh, continue the procedure because if we cross the perforation and the catheter acts as a healer, so we can close, we can continue. So this is the radial artery perforation and bad technique and guide catheter as a healer. So this is the perforation. Catheter is not advancing and we are taking a, a dye, the perforation, the radial artery. Then we cross with the PTC wire. Then we bat technique crossing the uh, perforated area. And this is another, another one. And this is after uh, uh, we are uh, crossing the um, perforation, uh, doing the procedure. And after the procedure, uh, there is no perforation and the catheter acts as a healer of the perforation. So when it, uh, 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 we thro go through the uh, perforated area, uh, the, it, it acts as a healer. So Perforation, the distal radial artery, this is another one. This is uh, by Professor Mir Jawaluddin, sir. I am taken from him. And this is, uh, we, can, we can also cross. And after the procedure, there is uh, no uh, perforation. This is the pseudo aneurysm of the radial artery. We can, uh, uh, sometimes it may be happened. But it can be treated by radial artery band. Compression is the treatment of pseudo aneurysm. So comp uh, maintain compression is the treatment of pseudo aneurysm. This is the pseudoneurysm of the uh, tr distal radial artery. This is from uh, Professor Sabina Hasem. Thank you, madam. And this is a uh, need to be operated for removal of the pseudoneurysm. This is the arteriovenous fistula. And catheter entrapment, uh, Professor Nur Alam already uh, mentioned uh, very nicely. So the denoting is the key. Denoting is the key. And, and it, it should be very gentle. We should be very gentle. Hematoma, the hematoma are gradually smaller easily. There is a hematoma scale. If it is less than 5 centimeter, it is grade 1, 10 centimeter, grade 2. If it is below the elbow, grade 3. And if it is el above the elbow, grade 4. So this is the scale, hematoma scale. And this is the hematoma bandage, forearm hematoma, different hematoma. This is very interesting, the hematoma in the infraclavicular region. So blister and hematoma, this is then a small hematoma, and this is the compartmental syndrome. So management of hematoma, apply pressure cuff at the site of induration. Inflate 15 minutes, uh, systolic BP 15, uh, uh, 15 millimeter below the systolic blood pressure, like the perforation, and every management is same that of permanent. Check for compartmental syndrome. This is very important. The plethysmography by pulse oximeter probe is very important. Here is the pulse oximeter is in the finger, and we'll check every finger, the plethysmographic curve. If it is okay, there is uh, nothing to audit. But if the curves are flat in any fingers, there is maybe a compartmental syndrome, and if the patient's pain is not relieved, then we'll call for the surgeon. So the key to prevent hematoma is single puncture is the best puncture uh, uh, method. Sheath artery ratio should be less than one, Travel always through the radial and brachial artery with fluoroscopic guidance. This is, sorry, there is a uh, spelling mistake. Fluoroscopic guidance. This is very important. From the puncture side to the uh, uh, ascending aorta, we should through the fluoroscopy. So inadvertent uh, journey to a small branch may produce an hematoma. So this is very important. Uh, if the difficulty of the catheter manipulation, check with the contrast. Put a compression 
with a BP cuff during the procedure at the site of catheter resistance. Don't wait for hematoma development. If we feel a dif uh, uh, difficulty to pass the site, we may have, we may fi uh, found that there may be a hematoma here, but if we put a compression during the procedure without producing hematoma, this may prevent hematoma. Use combo technique is a very important. This is the combo technique and the five French catheter, uh, multipurpose catheter over the, uh, 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 through the six French guide catheter and this is the very important and almost, uh, almost, I think it is 70 to 80 percent reduction of radial artery complication after we using the combo technique. Uh, I think Professor Mir Jamal Saru will agree with me. There is a very few complication after the combo technique. So this is nothing special, but we have to have a 125 millimeter multipurpose catheter, five friends, to for that uh, assembly. So this is very important. So Mr. Chairman, the uh, transradial route is the preferred route of coronary intervention. It has few complications than transfemoral route, even though the complication of transradial intervention is not uncommon. Complication is less in experienced head, so learning curve is very important. Pre-procedural planning, par-procedural and post-procedural appropriate measure reduce the complication. Immediate recognition of complication and prompt action is required for proper management. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience sharing.